Thanks. So um, I'm Bill Heinlein. I'm the field CTO of, of Chronosphere. Show of hands, who here, like in the next, I don't know, six, 18 months, is maybe thinking about a platform migration? Anyone? Show of hands. Anyone in the middle of one? Okay, for both groups, we're gonna take a three minute silence. <laughs> no, just kidding. Honestly, um, you know, before I came to Chronosphere, I was at United and was a practitioner for a long time doing uh, this type of work. So feel your pain. Out of that, I wanted to be able to share some tips for migration to make it go a little smoother. So hopefully those help some of you who are either about to start the journey or are on it now. So let's start with, with where you are. You know, let's face it, we're all brilliant. We created amazing observability, place, or observability platforms. People love them. They find issues much faster. I see somebody shaking their head back there like, nope. But they're in a perfect world. They're finding uh, things faster. They're improving performance issues. They're doing all sorts of great things to drive that ROI you all hope for when you sat in front of your CTO and your CFO. Right? And think about how amazing you were when you sat down and did all of this work to do your business case, convince people that you wanted to, to go on to observability, and all the things that happen when you go to do a rollout. You don't want to lose that momentum as you think about switching another platform, right? Because people love it, they want to keep using it, you don't want to lose that momentum. So as we talk about things that can contribute to maybe a little bit of loss of momentum, we'll give you three scenarios to talk through. The first is everyone's favorite. Why does this take so long? Right? And, you know, there are a number of things that can add to that, but I, there are really four things in, that I keep in mind for this. Number one is getting the right prioritization for a project. Ah, that went away. Yeah. I need observability on my laptop. I'm going to keep talking. The slides are not that exciting. Um, so there's, there's really um, uh, four things. So the first is prioritization. You know, I'm sure none of you will say that as you go to your DevOps teams that the first thing they're excited to do is all the things you want them to do for observability, right? But when you do that, you've got to get support from leadership. You need top-down leaders to support the idea so that you can get them to prioritize as appropriate with all the other things going on in your environment. So priority is really important. Second is planning. And that probably goes without saying. I mean, I'm guessing that as you think about your, your migration, you're not going, oh, let's just do this. We'll just figure it out on the way. No, we're not going to do that. But... You know, if you've already got it done once and you're thinking about a migration, maybe you're thinking, oh, I don't have to think about everything. And maybe there's some truth to that. But I'd think about a couple of things. Number one, um, think about the plan when it comes to organizational change management. You know, you've gotten people to fall in love with your platform, minus maybe one individual. Um, but you've got them to fall in love with your platform and now you've got to tell them you're breaking up. Like, that's a tough message. People fall in love with these tools. They don't like change. So you got to figure out how to tell that message. And you got to tell them, I'm, we're moving to this new amazing platform, and it's going to make your life better, and you're going to make a million dollars, and you're going to sleep at night. And then you're going to have to tell them what's in it for them on top of that, right? So you got to help them understand why are you changing, and what are they going to get out of it, bottom line. Then you got to figure out how are you going to gather requirements because you can't assume that the requirements that existed when you, when you rolled out observability before are going to be the same as, as now. Even if the window of migration is not far from when you originally did observability. So you got to really think about requirements. Uh, the third piece is about cleanup. You know, think about it. When you move things from your old platform to your new one. Number one, you want to minimize how much you do you move. If you do a lift and shift, you're going to take some problems with you, right? If you're in environments like I've been in, you have dashboards that exist that somebody created 
and nobody's used. You have this, uh, it's, you know, the sprawl of dashboards and queries. So cleaning those up. Um, I always say, you know, if I move, I don't move the litter box. Don't take the litter box. Uh, ah, we have very exciting slides back. Um, okay, where was I? So after you, after you think about the, the um, not moving the litter box. Okay. Okay. Um, the third thing, or the yeah, the third thing is, or the fourth thing, sorry, is to don't start over. As much as you might want, you've done a lot of great work. Even if you are having a hard time convincing others, starting over will set you way back. So, don't start over. So, just to summarize, plan, um, prioritize, plan, polish it up and don't start over. Um, the next scenario, I'm gonna keep flipping through these even though you can't see them, is don't give in to FOMO, right? You move to a new platform likely because of new features or challenges you're having. Either way, you as somebody who's in charge of, of observability is likely moving to that new platform because you're excited about those features. Don't get hung up on those. Think about what you've gotta collect and how you're collecting it now and don't try to take on a bunch of new fun functionality, a bunch of features, change your, your methodology on how you're driving metrics before you get your base success moved, right? Then, once you do that, then you can use, the, use that as, as phase two, right? Think about enhancement then from there. Think about how you drive greater value because look, we've got all these new features. We've got a technology that we can monitor now that we couldn't monitor before. But don't do that. Um, don't, don't get stuck in FOMO. And then the last thing is if you find yourself at the end of a migration and the only people know how to use your platform are the people that were on the project, you might have left out a step. Don't forget education. But don't over-rotate on it. You don't have to do a week-long course of two hours for everybody that's going to use your platform. Get to know who your champions are with your existing platform and think about how they're using the existing platform. What are they using the most? Are they big trace users? If so, make sure those power users know how to go from finding traces and doing amazing things in their current tool to how they can do it over here. Right? So think about how they can do what they're doing the same in the next tool. And then, again, don't get them hung up on new features. You'll come to that as you think about phase two and getting to introduce new features, new scope of metrics, all of that sort of thing. So, still no slides. Okay. So if we think about, there are, when we talk to customers about a migration to Chronosphere, we think about really five phases of a successful migration. Obviously prepare and then design. Both of those are a lot of what we're talking about today. But then we want to do, you know, obviously implementation, test, and adopt. Each of those is going to have some very unique things that you should spend some time thinking about. Adoption is key. Doesn't matter how hard you work, how amazing the platform works, if you can't get people to use it, then you're, you haven't succeeded. So think about the things that are going to help you adopt, like getting education, like helping people make the transition from one to the other, that sort of thing. And then again, as you think about key things to take care of, it's really three pillars. The first is, is prioritize, plan, and polish. Make sure people are going to do, have time to do what you want them to do and that you've got support from your leaders. Plan with the right communication and with the right uh, uh, evaluation of your existing requirements and add to your requirements as you need. And then polish. Don't move the litter box. Then stay on course with the migration. Don't get so excited about the new features. Don't try to, t to add a huge scope to the existing amount of telemetry you're taking in, move your existing thing and do the path, and move the path. And then last, protect, as we said about educating and enabling people to use it. So 
out of time. I will say we're having, stop by the booth out here or stop by and see us at H11 over the next couple of days. We are also doing a happy hour, cheers to observability on Thursday. So stop by. Um, if you're interested in what maybe you might have seen on the slides but didn't, I'm happy to share those somehow with you. Um, but thanks for your time and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.